I'm gonna I'm gonna engage with you. You know, I don't I don't want you to feel like I'm attacking you, but you said a lot, so I want to kind of unpack some of the things that you said, if that's okay. Um, yes. So, <clears throat> so you talked about. I want to focus on some of the reconciliation things that you talked about, if that's all right. Um, you mentioned the bride reconciliation. Now, my question to you is, um, in reference to how we come back. Now, it, it, I want to read a scripture to you. And then maybe that'll kind of give us a point to kind of go over. Um, bear with me here, because I'm going to grab something in Hebrew. Sure, sure, um, Salakia. I want to get Hebrews 3. So <clears throat> I'm going to just I'm going to start from Hebrews 3 and 15. Let me know when you when you're there with me, because I want to kind of ask a few questions about some of the things that you said. Okay, yeah, I'm here. All right, cool. So this is this is Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 15. It says, While it was said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Right? Now, who is this that came out of Egypt by Moses? That's an easy one. Uh, Israel. Israel. Right. right. Okay, so 17. But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but them that believe not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So we're going to take it to four because we know there was no numbers in this letter. This is just an epistle that went out to the Hebrews. So we're in four and one. Let us therefore fear. Right now, what does it mean to fear? The most high God. Uh well, it is to keep its commandments. Mm -hmm. It is to keep its yeah, it's to keep its commandments. Yeah. That's plain, right? Like we don't have to go crazy. We could go to Psalms one eleven and ten. We could go to uh Ecclesiastes twelve and thirteen, right? We don't have to go nuts with that. We know that to fear the most high is to keep his commandments, right? So right. but I want to get the context of what we see here in verse one. What does that fear mean in context in verse one? So we're going to we're going to look at it because we're going to keep reading. I'm not going to like isolate that word, but I just wanted to ask you because I wanted to make sure we had the same definition for what the fear of the most high God is. Because if we right. didn't, so I, can, I, can, I, want... I can agree to, to keep to uh, keep the uh, commandments. Yeah. All right. Cool. So we got the same point of understanding here. So let's move forward. So it says in verse one, let us therefore fear or keep the commandments of God. Right. Lest a promise being left of us entering into his rest, any of you should come short of it. Watch this, verse two. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. So now who is the them that the gospel was preached to? We just read well, about the Right, 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 right. Well, well, the context is, is those Israelites who came out of the, uh, out of, out of Egypt. Right. So the key here is, I, and I, if you don't know, I can show you, where was the gospel that was preached to the Israelites? Well, it was, it was, it was a good, well, I mean, you know, well, there was a couple of good news, you know, there's prophecies, but prophecies, well, well you got the gospel in Isaiah 61, um, you was know, that to the Israelites. Uh, yeah, it was Christ, Christ coming to the uh, Israelites, you know, in the, um, in the wilderness, in the wilderness though? but I'm talking about well, in the in the world, OK, so in the wilderness um, it's in referencing to to give us a land flowing, flowing with milk and honey. OK, but see, here's the thing. Is there is there more than one gospel? Uh, well, there's different. Well, 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 there's there's just. Is is just one the will of the Most High? You want to just put it that way? It's just one good news, the will of the Most High, right? But we can go to certain verses where it is some good news, right? If, if we go to if we obey, right, we would get the blessings. The Most High will make us head and not the tail, right? right. The Most High promised us a land flowing with with milk and honey. That's to be looked upon as as good news too, right? Okay. Um, the prophecies us getting restored, um, Isaiah. Yeah, this, this, but I, I would just say, you know, collectively, 
Um, Isaiah 61 is good news. It could be different type good news. Right. But pretty but much, I'm not, it's I'm right, not, yeah. I'm not running. I'm not running to Isaiah 61 because once again, I'm I'm focusing on what's here in Hebrews that the gospel was preached to the Israelites in the wilderness, right? So, so what I'm saying to you is, there's only one gospel, right? And I can, and we can agree on that. So, right. If there's only one gospel, would you also agree that the Most High uh, gives you the end from the beginning? He declares all things of, ahead of time. They, Correct. Yeah. Um, okay. Right. That's. Um, I think that's in, in um, um, Isaiah. Uh, I think it's 50. 55 and 11, I believe. I'm sure. Correct. Yeah. Right. So, so long story short, he always gives you a preview of what is coming. And then throughout the dispensation of time, you get to see how the outer working is, of his purpose is, is going to be fulfilled. Right. Would, is that safe? To say? All right. So, yes, that's, that's good. so, so, so would it also be safe to say that in that wilderness, they got the gospel that we have now? Because there's only one gospel. Yeah, it's 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 only one gospel. But again, what was preached unto them? What was that good news? Okay. Oh, um, oh, do you know where it is? Because if not, I'll show it to you. The all right. So we can we can go there if you would have shown me what uh, the gospel um, yeah. that was referenced to the um, oh, Israelites yeah. coming out of Egypt. I can see that. Yeah. And I want to yeah. see if it connects yeah. with the gospel that we see here in the New Testament. Sure. Now, here, now here's the interesting part. It's going to get crazy for you because if you've never seen this before, but you've read Christ, this is going to be great because you're going to get to see the gospel that the Israelites got. And I'm going to also show you Christ teaching the same thing, the exact same right. God. Is that cool? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. All right. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Let me know when you're there. All right, do the wrong All right, KJV. Yeah, I'm here. All right, cool. So we're going to start right from the top. So this is Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 1. It says, And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. So let's talk about that for one second. What is the blessing? that Israel ex is going to experience during, you mentioned the land of milk and honey, right? That's part of it, right? Yeah, that's right. That's what's the, what's the pinnacle? What, what would you say is the pinnacle of that blessing? Uh, governance, governance, inheriting all the nations, governance over the entire world. So like a prefigurement of that would be like David and Solomon, right? Yes, as the days of old. And the Most High will do better than what he did in the former. Yes. That that's what he promised, right? But he gave you like a taste of it. With like we can read it, right? Like you and I can go. It says, uh, it says the scriptures are written four times so that we can have hope, right? So we can go back and we can read about how David conquered all the nations. We can read about how Solomon was living, you know, lavishly. Like I think it's uh, First Kings chapter four and twenty is the breakdown of like what his daily intake was from the nations and how the, the children of Israel were pretty much they were balling out every day. So. Right kind of showing you like a preview of what the kingdom is going to be, right? Right, so, that's a good picture because, you know, some of the other nations, you know, again, they was they was uh, tight. They was tight, you know, but they didn't have a choice because the most high was with David. So, yeah, that's a that's a that's a good picture of how it would be in the uh, in, um once we get restored. Yeah. Right. So now now that having been said, that's your blessing situation, right? So you kind of got an idea of what that is or what it was, right? And what it will be, right? Now, right. here, now we also got to deal with the curse too, right? So it says, I'm gonna read it again. It says, and when and it shall come to pass when all these things shall come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. So now we got to talk about the curse, right? So what would you say um, is a good representation of the curses? Right. Well, the curses would be, um, you know, judgment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, disobeying um, us being ruled over. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but the most high, and again, we, we see that in the multiple captivities that we went in, like those are the curses. Yeah. And yeah. So, and even to this day, we are still, um, you know, in terms of us not receiving the blessings, mm -hmm. I would say that we are still cursed. But in terms of us individually, if we have the Holy Spirit, right, then I don't see ourselves to be cursed not in our land yet we don't got the fullness, the fullness of the blessings right 
mm-hmm. but um, we're not cursed um, as 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 far as us individually. But we're so, still yeah. even 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 with the Holy Spirit, you still subject to payments in the land of your captivity, though, right? Uh, yes. So I will concede the point, right? Because the Scripture says that we will have to go to our enemy for for want, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a part of the curse as well. So yeah, we we still. Um, under a curse somewhat since we are still going to the other nations right now. Yeah. All right. So you and I are still on the same page. We're going to keep reading. It says, it says, which I have set before thee. This is the blessing and the curse, right? Thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy God have driven thee. So now I'm going to show you something that Christ said, and I want to see what you have to say about it. Um, Let's go to Luke chapter 15. Right. Well, it's a lot. Well, it's a lot right here. So in uh, uh, verse 30, if you want to come back to this, but we can go to a uh, Luke. Right. You can go to because mm-hmm. we because the thing we know you you literally just said what I just read as far as the scattering and the captivities. Right. Right. Yeah. So I, so I just want to take you to something that Christ said, and I want to see if you see the correlation. All right. Cool. All right. So Luke chapter 15 and you can start at 11. All right. 15. All right, KJV. <clears throat> so, all right. So now, all right. So verse eleven, verse verse eleven. Mm-hmm. So it, it said, and he said, a certain right. man. So a certain man. Yeah, yeah, I got it. All right. So a certain man had two sons. Ah, and so the now, younger. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Who are those two sons in representation of this parable? Okay, all right. So a certain man had two sons. Who is this reflecting? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I have no idea. Uh, so who do you think it is? All right, so I would tell you that this is the northern and the southern kingdom of Israel. Now, keep reading. Go to 12. All right, 12. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of my goods that falleth to me. And he divided it unto them and and he divided unto them his living Mm -hmm. right they got the blessings right verse Mm -hmm. 13 and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living Mm, so hold on what's that riotous living that's the idolatry yeah riotous living like living like the world just yeah yeah Right. So there's, there's, so, there's, so there's your northern kingdom falling into idolatry, right? Read 14. 14. And when he has spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Mm-hmm. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. Whoa. Stop right there. So now he went and joined himself to be a citizen of that country. Right. So now watch this. I want you to do, do you have access to the Apocrypha? Uh, right now? No, I don't, because I'm I'm on my cell phone and I'm just going right. back and forth. And yeah. so, this, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to post something in the chat so you can read it along with me. Is that cool? Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. All right. So give me one second. I'm going to post something for you so you can see it. Um, So this is going to be first Maccabees one and 14. All right, and I'm gonna put this in the chat so you can see what I'm reading. I'm just gonna put I'm gonna put verse 14, and I'm gonna put verse 15 in there for you. All right, check this out. So you got First Maccabees uh, one and 14. It says, "Can you see it there?" Uh, let me refresh my screen. Let's see here. No, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. In the oh, room. No, nah, in the room chat. I... Oh, oh, okay. The room chat. Okay, yeah, I'm, making, I'm, making was... it simple. I'm making it simple for you. <laughs> right, right. The room chat. The room chat. Okay, mm-hmm. cool, cool, cool. All right. So first Maccabees 1 and 14. It says, whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem, according to the customs of the heathen. Right? Now, right. who would who were those heathen that they they built that place of exercise around? Uh, those was the um, other nations, the Gentiles. So that would be specifically 
Would you say that that was the Greeks? Uh, let me see here. Let me see here. Let me see here. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so all right, so whereupon they built a place of mm -hmm. exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen. Mm -hmm. Right. So you took me here, mm -hmm. right? So are you saying that um, the son who joined himself to a citizen of that country, mm -hmm. are you saying that citizen represent this heathen right re here? Read re verse 15. <laughs> okay. And made themselves and made themselves uncircumcised mm -hmm. and forsook the holy covenant mm -hmm. and joined themselves to the heathen mm. and were told to do mischief. See that? Okay. You see that? So right. you got you got a situation now where these people now are selling themselves to the heathen and literally are forsaking the holy covenant. Right? Right? So that's so let's go back to Luke. Let's get that Luke um 15 again. Right, Luke 15. Right. right. So, so now, so now sure. look at this. It's, and he went, yeah, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. Mm -hmm. And he sent him into the field, the fields to feed swine. Mm -hmm. Right? He so, read. okay, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, mm -hmm. and no man gave unto him. Mm. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. Now check this out. Isn't he now considering home? Would you yes. agree with that? Oh, absolutely. He's like, yo, like, really? Like, what? Like, you know, he, uh, here it is. I'm, I'm, you know, to this very, very low. Okay, but in my father's house, I you know, there's many of servants. Now, me being a son, of mm -hmm. course, the, uh, of course, a father cannot reject his his son, right? The Most High cannot reject his people, right? I agree. Now, the thing is, they walked away from him, according to rejecting that covenant, right? It wasn't a situation where he turned his back on them; they walked away. So right. the, scripture say, the scripture say, "Turn to me, and I will turn to you," right? So. So literally now we have a situation where he's what you would call bethinking himself. Repenting. Right? Correct. He's, he's no, nah, I'm not he's not repenting yet. Because what does it mean to repent? To turn back, right? Right. So he has a turn the whole yet. riotous, right? Because the riotous living, like what does that riotous living uh represent so, stand for? So man, when I studied this the first time, you know, like I thought about like you know, how riotous living typically like you just running around spending money on frivolous things. And, you know, it could be it could be gambling. It could be prostitution. It could be it could be anything, you right. know. Yeah. Um, but think, just think of how people are when they get too much money and they're not ready for it. That's pretty much guy because he got all of his inheritance up front. You know, and he was I guess he wasn't at a mature age to really handle it in this parable. Right. Right. He just spent up. He just spent up his money real quick. Just bought like three cars like for no reason <laughs> right yeah, and yeah. so he, he right he was broke now now he's broke so i can uh, totally see that so yeah. he's broke right now so he you know he's like he wanted to return so yeah yes yeah. so now you got a situation where he's been thinking himself like man i'm sitting here with swine you know and i i read i want to eat what they're eating hold on don't i have like servants where my father's house is and aren't i taking care of over there like i would never have to do anything like this Right. Um, so now he's been thinking himself. What scripture comes to mind in reference to that? And if you don't know it, I, I'll take you there. Well, there is a uh, it, it comes to mind, but I'm not too sure what that verse. Let's let's, uh, go, to, verse. let's go to first Kings eight. Let's first just, this is Solomon's prayer. Let's let's go to uh to first Kings eight. But I'm I'm shooting from the hip. I believe it's verse 46, but let me get there with you. Uh, uh lucky. It's 47. I was close. So it's first Kings 8 and 47. Right, once you get there, yeah, once you get the um um, um you can read. 
Okay, Kara. So this is uh, 1 Kings 8 47. It says, Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whether they were carried captives and repent and make supplication to thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saying, We have sinned and we have done perversely, we have committed wickedness, and so unto thee with all their heart. And would so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest to their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen and the house which I have built for my name. Then thou hear their prayer with their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place and maintain their cause and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee. And all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee and give them compassion before them who carry them captive that they may have compassion on them for they be thy people and thine inheritance which thou brought forth from egypt from the midst of the furnace of the iron so now this prayer um solomon offered it up and as you continue to read you see that the most high accepted that prayer right so this became the standard for repentance right Right. Now, exactly. Now, so yeah, now this is this is, uh, um, this is uh, Second Chronicles uh, seven and fourteen, right? Yeah, this, no, this, no. I just that's actually the parallel scripture to this. But I gave you first. I gave you First Kings eight and uh, and forty seven. Right, because mm -hmm. it's right is uh, identical for what we see here in Second Chronicles seven and fourteen. Mm -hmm. It just says, yeah. "If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face." And turn from their wickedness then when i hear from heaven i would i would forgive their sin and will heal their land so yeah same same context here yeah. mm -hmm. now let's go back to um let's go back to actually we could go right back to deuteronomy now because we have this understanding that he's bethinking himself he's in the land um, of his captivity right from the standpoint of we're talking about Israelites being in the land of the captivity, but thinking themselves, right? But in this parable, he's in this foreign land as a citizen taken up, you know, under under the heathen, right? So let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter two, uh, 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 30 and two, rather. All right, Deuteronomy 30. Okay, yes, it'll be good. Uh, verse right. two. And it says, and thou and shalt return unto the Lord thy God and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Right? So now here's the key. Go to go back to Luke chapter 15 and read 18. All right. Okay, Luke, uh, Uh, KJV, let me see. Who was that? Luke 13? Mm -hmm. And 18. And 18, so it says, I will raise, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Mm. Verse 19. And am no more worthy to be called your son. Mm. Make me as one as your highest servants. Mm. Now hold on. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 30 and 3. I right. watch what happens. Right. Well, see, that's yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot right there, bro. Like, you know, that's a lot. That's a lot, bro. Mm -hmm. I mean, to understand what he um, you know, what befell him to what low he was in. Mm -hmm. And just the whole idea of him saying, Look, give me, give me my inheritance right now. Like he wanted it right now, just just to consume up on his lust. So the father said, okay, here. Yeah. So clearly that was the wrong thing to do. And the mm -hmm. son is returning, talking about, look, you know, I've I've done wrong. But the most high, as we do know, a broken and a contrite spirit, he would not ignore. So it's important exactly. we have to repent. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You see that? All right. So you said go back to uh Deuteronomy. Yeah, Deuteronomy 30 and 3. Um, because we're going to find out. See, it's, it's crazy because what's going to happen here is going to be the same thing that's going to happen in Luke. Watch watch what happens. It's almost like Christ is telling you this story through Deuteronomy. Watch. Okay, so what is Okay, yeah, we got it. I'm there. 
Mm -hmm. So now this is Deuteronomy 30 and 3. It says that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God has scattered thee. Now go back and read. <laughs> go back and read that uh, in uh and Luke, Luke 15. Yeah, Luke 15 and 20. Read read that. All right, 15 and 20. All right, so we got mm -hmm. here. And he arose and came to his father. Right, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, mm. his father saw him and had compassion and ran. Mm. The compassion. So, oh, See that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Con, 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 right, and fell on his neck and kissed him. Right, mm. keep twenty one. Yeah, and the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in your sight, I am no more worthy to be called your son. Now, Verse twenty two. Now don't don't go, Lord, don't, don't, don't go don't don't go don't do twenty two yet. Don't do twenty two yet because I got a couple of questions for you. Just just from where we are right now. So now you see the compassion that's displayed by the father, right? The same way that the father said that he would have compassion in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 3 and gather the Israelites from all the nations where the Lord thy God has scattered thee, right? Right. So now, so now what was the prerequisite in order for that to happen? <clears throat> Well, the son had to, uh, you know, come to himself, you know, come to himself and uh, uh, thank himself, uh, repent. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if, if you want to say keep keep the law, yeah, you know, is is that's that's important. Uh, All right. To turn cool. from your wicked ways. If you turn from your wicked ways, that means you're you're keeping something. If mm -hmm. you turn from doing those wicked ways, yeah. So now, all right, let's go to Matthew chapter twenty two and thirty six. Cause, cause I'm, I'm going to give you just as much Christ as I'm giving you this gospel that's taught in the, uh, in the wilderness. Cause I want you to understand it's the same thing. All right. Matthew, uh, 22, 22 and 36 and read down to 38. All right. So, uh, 22, right, hold on, let me get the full chapter here. All right, so Matthew 22 mm -hmm. and verse 30, 30, 36. 36. And, and read that. <clears throat> Master, what is the great commandment in the law? Mm -hmm. uh, verse 37. And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. Now watch this. Go back to Deuteronomy 30 and 2. And read that. All right, Deuteronomy 30 and 2. Deuteronomy 30 and 2. And shall return unto the Lord your God and shall obey his voice according to all that I command you this day, that mm. you and your children with all your heart and with all your soul. Mm. You see that? Loving yeah. the Lord, loving him with all your heart and with all your soul, right? And then the next verse says, then he'll have the compassion upon you, right? And gather you right. from all whether you're scattered. Now, we can go into a, pre a plethora of scriptures, as you know. I don't I don't have to belabor this point. I'm just trying to keep it basic with you as far as the 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 recipe, so to speak, for for have for the most high having compassion upon his people and redeeming them from their captivity, right? Right. So the point that we came here, right? Mm -hmm. I can see where it said the gospel mm -hmm. that was spoken unto them. Mm -hmm. Now, you are correct. I can see the gospel of the New Testament is the same gospel that you brought me here in Deuteronomy in the Old Testament. It's the same gospel, same promises. So mm -hmm. you are correct. It's the same gospel. Now, um, they were not able to, um, you know, many of them perished in the wilderness, right? Mm -hmm. Many of them perished in the wilderness. So they wasn't able to uh, get that land, okay, um, because of unbelief. 
but mm-hmm. it's a clear stark picture of us returning to our land to return to our land if if um we have to obey the gospel and uh the uh, commandments everything that christ told us so i can see the gospel yeah we have to you know uh, uh take heed to it so okay? now and, but this this this, this yeah. there's more to it though there's more to it because we're gonna we're gonna take it a little further i want you to read three four and five and Deuteronomy 30? <coughs> uh-huh. All right, three. All right, verse three. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse three. That then the Lord your God will turn your captivity and have compassion upon you and will return and gather you from all the nations where, where, where the Lord your God have scattered you. Verse four. If any of you be driven out unto the utmost part of heaven, from thence the Lord your God will gather you and from thence will he fetch you. Verse five, and the Lord your God will bring you into the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it, and he will do you good and multiply you above your fathers. Mm. Verse six, and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. Mm. See that? Yeah. So hold on, stop, stop right there because we're seeing the gathering, right? And right. now I want you to see Christ say it, right? Now go now go to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30. Matthew 24. Uh matter of fact, if you so you can start at you can you can start at 24 and 29, but read down to uh 30 31. All right, 24, let me see. All right, 24, Matthew 24, and start from 29. Uh, Yeah, 20, 24 and 29, and read down to 31. All right. <clears throat> All right, so immediately, immediately after the tribulation of those days, mm-hmm. shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Mm -hmm. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Mm. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Mm -hmm. 31. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Mm, Stop right there. So now, literally, we just read that. We just read that. We just read it in Deuteronomy, that if you're driven to the utmost parts of heaven from thence, will the Lord thy God gather thee. And from thence he will fetch thee. Right? And you're seeing here, in 31, he's sending his angels with a great shout of a trumpet, and they shall gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Same gospel, I, the same yeah. exact. And now, yeah, yeah, so right now, now what I want you to do, um, did you read verse five in Deuteronomy 30 yet? Um, I believe I did. Okay, because yeah. that. that because that's talking a little bit about um, the financial aspect in the kingdom, right? So, like, let me read that real quick, just to kind of, um, because because then I'm gonna tie that right back in with where we were with the prodigal son. So now, watch this. It says, "This is Deuteronomy 30 and 5. It says, "And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and He will do thee good." and multiply thee above thy fathers, right? Now, watch this. Go to Luke chapter 15 and 22 and read that. Uh, Luke 15. All right, Luke 15, 22. Mm-hmm. All right. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe Mm. and put it on him 
Mm-hmm. And put a ring on his hand mm-hmm. and shoes on his feet. Mm-hmm. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. Mm. 24. For this my son was dead and is alive. Again, he mm-hmm. was lost and is found. Mm-hmm. And they began to be merry. So listen, I, there's a few things in here. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna skate past this one because this is a very very deep breakdown here. He said to bring forth the best robe, right, and put it on and put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet, right. So now back in Deuteronomy chapter three thirty and five, he says, "And I will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do you good and multiply you above your fathers." Right. So you see the blessing here. He's putting him back in his position and extending him even more by giving him the best robe, clothing him, putting the ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And right, now they're right. part, partying. They got that fatted calf. Right. Let's eat and be merry. Now, this 24 is, is the thing I wanted to get into. It says, for my son was dead. So now when you are when you are not in knowledge. You're not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. What congregation are you in? Uh, the congregation of the uh, wicked. No, be close. But I mean, I, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you the scripture. Let's go to. Let's go to Proverbs 21 and 16. Twenty-one, sixteen. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, okay, sixteen. Okay. So, um, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Yeah. See that. <laughs> So he right. said, for she said, for this my son was dead, right? So this is a parable, remember. So this is Israel's inability to get out of this idolatry, the inability to keep these commandments, right? So now they wandered out of the way of understanding. What understanding did they did they wander out of? Go to Deuteronomy chapter four and verse six. I'm shooting from the hip. If it's not six, I'll get you to the right verse. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what you want. That's what you want. All right, four. All right, four, verse six. Mm -hmm. uh, Keep therefore and do them, for Mm -hmm. this is your wisdom and your understanding in Mm -hmm. the sight of the Which Mm -hmm. here, all the way, wait, 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 wait. All right. (laughs) Keep therefore and do them. Mm-hmm. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, mm-hmm. which shall hear all these statues and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. See the understanding now? So it says the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. He said, for this, my son was dead. And is alive again. Right? So let's deal with the alive part. Because I this like I said, this is a little this Christ is masterful, man. I mean, literally, he will he will say two, three sentences and have you in the prophets heavy. Watch this. Go to Ezekiel chapter 37. All right, Ezekiel 37. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go to this page AB. All right, Ezekiel 37. So I'm gonna uh, read this. One. I'm gonna read this one because it's a lot of verses. So I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna move through it. Um right, cool. so this is this the this is uh Ezekiel 37 and verse one. It says, The hand of the Lord was upon me. This is Ezekiel, obviously, and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And look, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, Lord God, thou knowest. 
Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. And he said unto them, oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now, what's the word of the Lord? Uh, the word of the Lord is uh, uh, the good news, his, uh, his will, the gospel. All right. So hold on. So let me let me let me give you some context. Right. So when Christ said, matter of fact, I'll give you his words because I, I think you'll, you'll receive it. Go to Matthew chapter four, and verse four. All right. Matthew four. All right. All right. So what we have, right, Matthew 4, verse 4, mm -hmm. it is written, right. But he said, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Right. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So now where was this written? Because he says it is written. Where is this written? Deuteronomy 18 and 13. Get that. Deuteronomy 18, 13? Salakia, 8 and 3. Okay, 8, eight three. and 3. Delakia. Delakia. Yeah, I gave you the wrong address. All right, 8 and 3. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have here. I can read it if you want. And, and, and he... All right, and he humbled, all right, um, Deuteronomy 8 and 3. Mm -hmm. And he humbled you and suffered you to hunger and fed you with manna which you know it's not, neither did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of the Lord. Do what mm -hmm. man live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. So, yeah. So these words are the commandments, right, that are proceeding out of the mouth of God. That's what we live by. That's what we breathe by, right? So now go back to Ezekiel chapter 37 and 1. Because he asked him a question. He said in verse three, he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? Right. Right. And he said, and I answer, oh, God, thou knowest. In other words, like, man, I don't know. Right. So verse 34, uh, it's so like your verse four. This is 37 and four. And he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, ye dry bones, hear the word of the lord so these are the commandments right verse five thus saith the lord god unto these bones behold i will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live and i will lay sinews upon you and i will bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that i am the lord so I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. And he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come with the four winds of breath and breath upon the slain that they may live. See, they're in the congregation of the dead, right? Verse 10, so I prophesied and he commanded me and the breath came into them, these laws, and they lived and stood on their feet, a great and exceeding army. And he said, then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel, behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. So this situation of being in the congregation of the dead, not having the wisdom and understanding, right? Not keeping the law, statutes and commandments leaves you slain. You in the, you're in the valley of dry bones if you're not keeping these commandments. I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. So- Right, right, right. No, no, I, 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 I totally, um... The commandments are extremely important. Um, we are to keep the law, and, and I'm not one to uh, go against uh, go against that, right? All right. So, what's your take, right? What's mm -hmm. your take? Now, again, everything you presented was was awesome. It was it was a breakdown. It connected Old Testament, New Testament. Mm -hmm. What Christ spoke about, he quoted the Old Testament, and you went straight to those verses. Now, I wanna I wanna I wanna look at um, Micah chapter five. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Um, therefore, she shall enter. Okay. So, Micah chapter 5 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. And I want to see um, what you think about that because. Let me see. Yeah. Micah 5, verse 3. Because we're going to be given up. So, you want to, you know, if you're there, you can read it and just. Yeah, uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, you got it says, therefore, Will he give them up until the time that which that she which travaileth hath brought forth? Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel, and she shall okay. stay. Uh huh. Right. So, so who was so who was this woman who was who was pregnant because she um, she's she's going to bring you know she's going to bring forth. Um, mm -hmm. who is, who was this, you know, what is Israel trying to birth according to Micah five and verse three? So you got, you got a few things going on, right? So, cause I was actually reading ahead a little bit. Um, so you've got the Northern and the Southern kingdom that they split off in, in first Kings 11, right? Um, Northern kingdom went into idolatry. They went into captivity in Assyria. They were, they were carried away there. And then after that, they ended up leaving that area so that they could serve um, a land that never man well which is referred right. to as ours right through america so you've got the you got the three tribes that are left over now the scriptures tell you in the prophets that the tents of judah will rise first right so that the other ones wouldn't um, exalt themselves over them because that's the ruling class so judah received the message from christ first um that that being born um and and coming to fulfill those prophecies that were written about him and specifically bringing that message to the the quote unquote tribes of Judah Benjamin and Levi first um right. that's that bringing forth and then the remnant of his brethren shall return right because the tents of Judah have to rise first Right. Okay. So, so Micah five and three, we can agree that this is a prophecy that have not yet uh, been fulfilled yet. Correct. Because um, if we go to a Micah four um, is, is referencing to where, all right. So Micah, Micah five and Micah five and verse four, and he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord and the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God. And they shall abide and they shall abide for now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth right and this man shall be the peace when the assyrian shall come into the our land and when he shall tread in our palaces so and we can just keep on reading you know mm -hmm. down but the, the point of here is i i came here because it says therefore he right he will give them up until the time which she travaileth have brought forth so which means Israel is Israel as a nation or as a people is pregnant. This is a a, a metaphorical uh, prophecy. Right. And so what is she trying to birth um, from what I see is, is that um, because, again, there is, you know, also in the book of Revelation, um, the pregnant yeah, 12, woman. Twelve. Yeah. Revelation. Yeah. Twelve. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to just go. The same thing. You can you can get you can go there if you want to. Okay, Revelation twelve. Mm -hmm. What's that verse? All right, is it uh, verse one uh, specifically? Can, which verse? We can start from the top there. All right, Revelation twelve. Let's just go to it real quickly because I think uh, there's a connection here, right? It, no, it's, it definitely is. You 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 uh <laughs> you're linking them up. Go ahead. Yeah, Revelation chapter twelve. And um, we can start from, um, all right, so verse one. And mm -hmm. there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and mm -hmm. upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Mm -hmm. Represent uh, Israel, right? Verse mm -hmm. two. She being with child, cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Mm -hmm. Right? So, I mean, like, like this is like totally Israel, right? We're we're crying and trying to bring forth, and what are we trying to bring forth? We're trying to bring forth a manifestation 
of the Son of God. Right. And once right now, the New Testament, from what I see, these what I see the instructions is this is what um you know is is in reference here from what I see, right? So verse three, and there appeared another wonder in heaven, a great and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Mm -hmm. All right. And verse four, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did mm -hmm. cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered to devour her child as soon as it was born. Verse five. And she brought forth a man child who mm -hmm. was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto the Lord or unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God, and they mm -hmm. shall feed her a thousand two hundred and three score uh, days. Mm -hmm. So I came here uh, because this woman, this man child, right? Um, and we just left Micah uh, uh, five and three, mm -hmm. where in reference to where Israel, he will give them up, and I believe he is the most high until this woman brings brings forth from what we see this pregnant woman from what we see in revelation chapter 5 uh, uh chapter 12 and um verse 1 all down to um verse 5 so mm -hmm. we we have to link this up so what is the most highlight what is he looking for now i agree to keep the commandments keep the commandments i i totally agree mm -hmm. but um you know it's it's i i believe is more than that i believe there is a spiritual uh, awareness as well, right? Um, because the whole idea, if we go to, um, you know, the whole goal is for us to be conformed to Christ's image. We know the Holy Spirit provides this, um, you know, to be sons and daughters of God. And um, if we go to, uh, what's that, Romans? I mean, I can paraphrase it, where it speaks about the earth wait for the manifestation Oh yeah. oh yeah, I love that scripture. The creature awaited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, I, because all the curses, because all the curses get lifted mm -hmm. off the earth. But you know what? Yeah. But you made you made a very valid point initially, where you said that. All right, I'm gonna take you to a precept, and then you can, and then you can expound on it because you kind of you kind of touched on it a little bit. Um, so you, there's a situation right now where the wicked are ruling over us. Period. Right. You can right. you, you can clearly see it by the way that the world is being run right now. Um, but the key is when when we're in rulership, then everybody is going to be pleased with it, regardless of the stratification in the kingdom, because we're going to be ruling in righteousness. Right. Correct. Right. So 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 the, the key is um, you don't you don't want a situation where the where the, where the wicked are ruling. Um, because anytime that they're in rulership, they're just going to do whatever they want to do. They don't, they don't live by the law, statutes, and commandments. They don't have any limitations on what they do, right? The, go to Proverbs 29 and 2. You'll see what I'm talking about, because it kind of encapsulates the thought that you were making earlier. All right, Proverbs. Oh, you said 29 and 2? Mm-hmm. All right, Proverbs twenty nine and two. Mm -hmm. When the righteous, yeah, this 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 came to my mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But mm -hmm. when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Yeah, right. So you gotta excuse me because I'm eating lunch while I'm talking to you. But <laughs> sure, sure. That's good. Um, right. well, well, no, that was that was that was that was a good point. And and mm -hmm. you know, once we no, and, and I and I totally agree. So the earth is waiting. You know, not just the people, but the earth itself. The earth's going to uh, bring forth and multiply and blossom. Uh, the curses will be lifted. Uh, the curses that was applied in uh, uh, Genesis uh, when the fall occurred. Uh, wildlife, you know, those curses will be lifted. Um, childbearing pains, those curses, you know, will be lifted. So the earth wait for the manifestation of, of the sons and daughters of God. Mm -hmm. um, again, uh, the Most High have have given the kingdoms 
of of the earth into man. You know, it was it was it was given into man's hands. You know, um, I understand Christ. You know, he have presidents or a right to two thrones. You know, he's governing over uh, the heavenly throne. His father. You know, in terms of um, you know the right hand of power. I think the son is is um, at the helm. I'm mm -hmm. at the right hand of power, but the but the father will is still being done. But, you know, we do know that Christ was doing the will of the father. But Christ also got precedence over an earthly throne as well um, to the uh, rights of David's throne. So that's um, right. But we're going to be ruling for the kingdom will be given unto us, but we're going to be ruling on behalf of him. Um, so, yeah. And the most high the God of Israel, his powers. Right. So it's clear that Christ have power over nature and you know things of that nature so um yeah look the most high is waiting for us man you know to uh repent and uh you know is 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 this birth bro is his manifestation is meeting that requirement because we have read in second chronicles 7 and 14 mm -hmm. where uh, the most high said if we turn from our wicked ways we seek his face mm -hmm. um we we pray and things in that nature you know when that standard have been met that the most high is looking for only he knows right we can just say all right well i'm gonna just do good for like one day all right maybe that's enough right hmm. and then you know do good for maybe like three months okay and and that's enough well the most high he determines right when when it's enough now mm -hmm. if we falter again right if we falter again if we fall down right the righteous do fall down but the righteous need to repent and get back up and and uh make sure that this repentance is is kept intact because the most high is looking for something he's looking to see if we're ready uh to take over the helm right and it, it all comes with spiritual maturity we we have to have that maturity so we can we can if if we seek his face turn from our wicked ways um is as as far as law we have to keep the law right we want to keep um, the customs, right, and, and I totally agree with that. Okay, that's that's totally fine. But is I believe sins of the heart also is a problem because the most I say turn from your wicked ways. I think is more heart issues as well. You have to turn that, from that. That's that's actually what you're saying right now is actually the tail end of that gospel that we were going through. Believe it or not. Um, go matter of fact, go back to that. Go go to verse six in Deuteronomy um thirty. Yeah. All right, six. Mm -hmm. All right, Deuteronomy 30, verse six. Because mm -hmm. we've already, I think at this point uh, in that scripture, I'm going to go back with you. It should be talking about how we were gathered, right? And Christ talked about that, gathering us back to the lands of our fathers and multiplying us above our fathers, right? Yeah, now, to circumcise the heart. Was that there you go. To, yeah. So, so yeah, read six. Yeah, six. Um, And the Lord... And 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 the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed to love the Lord your God with all your heart and will all and with all your soul that you may live. Right. And the so Lord now, and the Lord your God. Yeah. Yeah. And wait, 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 wait. And the Lord your God will put mm -hmm. all these curses mm -hmm. upon your enemies. Mm -hmm. And on them that hate you, mm -hmm. which persecuted you. Right. right. So, I didn't even go, right. I didn't want to go there yet, because that's also part of the gospel. <laughs> right. And that's a part of the gospel that a lot of people run from. These curses have to go on the other nations that, that we went through. Right. Well, well, they're gonna be tight. They're gonna be they're gonna be they're gonna be upset. They're gonna look, they're gonna be upset. Once once we is is going to be a role reversal. Now we're in charge. Now, now they tight, right? Mm -hmm. Now, now they upset, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so it's the same way how we are right now. Like this don't make no sense. Da, 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 da. It's, it's mm -hmm. going to be a reverse. So, mm -hmm. um, but look, this is what the books say, but yeah, we have to, uh, yeah, we have to prove we have to turn and, and look, this is, this is look, I bro every day, bro. I, you know, is is, I mean, I seek the most high. I mean, I try to, um, you know, to a turn from my wicked ways, you know, is, I mean, I can, I can, um, in, in terms of some of the uh, customs and things of that nature, 
you know, uh, though, again, I don't, I don't have no issue. Again, I don't eat pork. I don't, I don't do all those things. Right. But I see where like my heart type type issues. I have to make sure that I don't have wicked ways within my heart. Um, as right. far as adultery, right. We can't have adultery. We can't lust because, you know, you was going back and forth earlier with, uh, Greg where, um, you know, the laws was not done away with, but they was enhanced certain ones. <laughs> I have to say, yeah, certain <laughs> ones was enhanced. Right. When the most high said you can't commit adultery, you can't commit adultery physically. It was enhanced to where we can't even lust after a woman. Right. Now, well, hold on. We, I got I got to ask you a question on that. Now, right. you said, key word in there that you said that I want to it's a point of contention and it's not. It ain't heavy contention. It's just slight contention, right? Right. That's cool. Yeah. So you said. So you said, and you said that he enhanced the law, right? I would not say enhanced. I would change that word to magnify because I can show you that in scripture, that Christ came to magnify the law, and to make it honorable. Now, what I would say is that let's matter of fact, let's go to that scripture, and I'm gonna show you something, and I think I can show you better than I can tell you. If you, right, cool. you want you want to take me there? Sure, what verse? Um the the one in reference to adultery. Uh just go to I think it's uh, Matthew yeah. uh, Matthew chapter five and like oh, see, man. should be like in the twenties or something like that. Let me see. Uh All it's right. 20, 27. 27. Right, cool. Just read read that. Okay. Um, right. So, uh, 27, ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, you mm -hmm. should not commit adultery. Okay. Verse oh, oh, but hold on, hold on. Of yeah. old time, right? So now when Christ is saying this, what is of old time? Like, where would you read that? In the Torah and the law. All right. So literally I would go to like Exodus 20. Yeah, Ten Commandments. Yeah, I will go to Exodus 20 and I'm going to do that. I'm going to read it. Hold on. Let me just, just for context, right? Because we're going to, I'm going to stay right on track with Christ with this. So this is, this is Exodus chapter 20 and verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Go ahead and read that. Okay. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay. So here, um, okay. I missed my, I missed my spot. Let me see 20. Yeah, 28. Yeah, 28. All right. So, yeah. But I said unto you that whosoever. All right. 27 or 28? All uh, right. 27. 27 is what you read. You can read it again. Read it again. Right. Like what it's... All right. You have heard that it was said by them of old time that mm -hmm. you should not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Verse 28. But I say unto you that whoso. But I say unto you mm -hmm. that whosoever look on a woman to lust after her. Committed mm -hmm. adultery with her already in his heart. So now let's deal with that. So right. I, I noticed that when you read that, you read with zeal and vigor that, that but I say unto you, right? Right. right. So now so I'm going to read a quick scripture and then I'm going to take you to a point because I told you this is going to be light contention because I don't I don't have an issue with Christ, you know, obviously. Right. But I just I think that sometimes there's like a, I don't know there's like a haze over what he's actually doing um, that needs to be clarified. So let's go to we can, we're gonna put a bookmark here and, and we're gonna go to John chapter twelve and verse forty nine. All right, John twelve forty nine KJV. All right, John 12, 49, mm -hmm. and it reads, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I shall speak. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Verse 50, mm -hmm. And I know that his commandment, and his commandment is life everlasting. Wait, 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 mm -hmm. wait. I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever right. I speak, therefore, even mm -hmm. as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Right. So now my question to you would be, did Christ lie here or is he telling the truth? Um, 
Well, he's he's well, he's not lying. I mean, be be far from it. Well, he's telling the truth, right? But mm-hmm. we understand where Christ says, "But I say." Okay. Now, when Christ made that distinction, but I say mm-hmm. is the Father who's saying something else right now. So now you're saying that the Father is saying something else. So do you believe that the Father changes? Um, well, I well the Father don't change. His you know his his ways and character don't change. But in terms mm-hmm. of in terms of uh, the progression of his will, his will do change because he declared everything from the beginning right and everything he didn't speak the same words right he he spoke different words that he's going to do this 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 that and that so um so the most high don't change but his will do change uh his will is progressive right his will have to be completed so yeah his will changes but not the most high himself yeah so so like okay and i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna put a pin on this real quick but I, before i do that i'm just trying to get an idea of where your thought process is because i don't believe in like snatching the rug from under people i like to peel the orange to kind of see what what layers i'm dealing with so right but i agree but i agree the father you know uh for what the father spoke now christ says i don't do everything i'm telling you is because the father spoke mm-hmm. so you know to get into who christ is Mm-hmm. You know, as far as, you know, if one have a oneness uh, position or a, a, a Unitarian position, mm-hmm. you know, we can go into that. But Christ, this is he, 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 right, with this. He is, he, his father, his father is coming. OK, Mike, Malachi three and verse one. Right. Mm-hmm. The one who was speaking is the one who said I'm coming. So now read, read verse six in that. Read Malachi uh, three. Verse, OK, Malachi three. OK, Malachi three. All right, let's, mm-hmm. let's go to, because uh, Malachi 3 and verse 1. Verse 6 is what I want because because this will help. Because And I'm going to take you right to the point. I'm not going to belabor it. All right, cool. Let me go straight to it. Okay, so, and this is how God was able to be manifested because Christ oh, obeyed. He was obedient, right? So, so like it. Is that, is that Malachi 3 and 6? Uh, Malachi 3, all right, so Malachi 3 and verse 6 is is this let me just um go to it let me just see if this is um, what you want where it says for i am the lord yeah i am the lord i change not therefore you sons of jacob are not consumed right yeah so so he don't change what happens is he declares the end from the beginning and then we just see the outer working of his purpose but whatever he says is what's going to be right right So, so like for instance I'm going to give you this commandment as an example, right? And you're going to see exactly what I mean by this. So I just showed you how Christ is only speaking the words that the father gives him, right? And whatever he's speaking is what the father told him to speak, according to John chapter 49, uh, John chapter 12, 49 and 50, right? So now let's get back to the actual factuals. Let's go to Exodus. Bring it. Bring right. It to- let me just, right. So, but let me just say this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if if you if if you look on a woman to lust after her, right? Mm-hmm. That's also wrong. I mean, you agree that's also wrong. I mean, I'm, you, you know, that would that would be that would be beneficial for us once we get back in our land and mm-hmm. to live amongst each other. It will be beneficial mm-hmm. not to even lust because we know David, you know, with Bathsheba, he was looking, he was looking, right? Well, now, um, was, was David looking the sin? Um, <laughs> it's not a trick question. It's right, not right, right. No, no, no. Looking, it's looking, not. right. No, looking in, in, in that in that context. No, looking does was not the sin. Okay, right. it, it was, it was it not was, the sin because Christ it, showed that distinction when He says, "But I say." So, so, so was the sin. So was the sin the looking or the wanting another man's wife? Uh, the sin was well according to what. Um, the law says the Ten Commandments. The sin was committing the act of adultery, right? Or, okay. I mean, also coveting. Also coveting. I mean, also okay. coveting too. Perfect. I'm glad you said that. So now let's go to let's go to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 17. Exodus 20. Okay. So mm, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> All right. So because right. So. 
for us, right, for, for someone to lust after a woman, right, um, that will be the sin of coveting, exactly. right? That will be the sin, right, that will be the sin of coveting, something that does not belong to you, right? Mm -hmm. But right. Christ connected that to where that's adultery in your heart, though. So re Christ kind of, he, he re interconnected that. Read re 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 Exodus 20 and 17. Read that. All right. Exodus 20 and 17. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, KJB. All right. So, right. So, thou shalt not cover your neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's wife nor his uh -oh, manservant. Stop, stop whoa, right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right, yeah. Stop, stop right there. So, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Why wouldn't you covet your neighbor's wife? What's good? What's that going to lead to? Uh, fornication. I, I mean, um, um, adultery. Exactly. So, Christ didn't tell you anything that wasn't already in the law. That's my point, because literally yeah. right here, you can see yeah, that the, but, but the why did he connect that though? Why did why did he connect a a uh, and and again, it's I don't I don't think it may it may look it may seem like he just rephrased the uh, commandments, but the uh, conclusion where you're committing adultery in your heart mm -hmm. by coveting, right? Yep. By by coveting, yeah. So. Right. And, and so, um, but it, it do fall beneath uh, to not um, covet exactly. what don't belong to you, uh, your neighbor's wife, manservant, mm -hmm. maidservant, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. You are not, you know, you are not to covet. Mm -hmm. Okay. But Christ says, um, as far as um, what he said in uh, Matthew, mm -hmm. um, even if you look upon a woman to lust after her, you have committed adultery already in your heart. He didn't say you committed, um, you know, he didn't say that you uh, committed uh, you brought the commandment of not to covet, right? Uh, he said you are committing adultery in your heart. So, so let me ask even, you. So let me, right, so let me ask you. Know, even even, even the other one where it says to hate your brother, you know, as well, you know, like life in the yeah. course. Right. So as far as killing, yeah. So same thing. So this is this is a clarifying question, right? Who would know if you were lusting in your heart? Uh, the Holy Spirit. I mean, the Most High would know. You know, the, the most, the most, the most high, right. The most high would know. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, I guess, I, I mean, I guess somebody else would know once your actions. If they are, caught you, are, but if you, if you got it off, let's say you saw somebody's wife and, they, and you looked them up and down real quick and you was like, Ooh, right. Knowing that right. that's that man's wife, right. Right. That's a problem. That's, that's a, that's a problem. That's right. a problem. Now, but here's the thing. If nobody saw you do that, who knows that you did that? Or the most high. Most high knows, right? Right. If you covet your neighbor's wife, who knows you did that? The most high knows. Most high knows, right? So the point is, these are these are what you would consider to be secret sins, right? Where right. You're, you're, you're looking at something that don't belong to you with the desire to have it. Right. That's what, and that's specifically what Christ is talking about here in Matthew 5 and 28. You're lusting after something that you're not supposed to have, because if it's a woman that's of marriageable age, that is, you know, that's not betrothed to nobody, then you can look at her and you should be looking at her. If you, you know what I'm saying? Like if you, you're trying to be fruitful and become many, right? So you should be like, Ooh, okay. Let me go holler at the sister, see what's going on. You know, let me, let me see, let me talk to her father. You know what I'm saying, see if I can right, get... right, it has, right. It must be done <laughs> right? because, again, because uh, Second Chronicles chapter seven and fourteen, we're trying to turn from our wicked ways so we can be delivered. Right, so right. it's important. Right, this, like, this, is, like, this is when, when I'm just going to give you an example, like when Jacob saw Rachel, that man was willing to work seven years in the field for that. <laughs> yeah, you understand? What I'm saying? He was like, damn. You know what I'm saying? So like. That there was no problem with that because she was not betrothed to nobody. You Correct. see what I'm saying? Now, in the situation, if that would have been somebody's wife, that's a problem because now you're coveting. See the difference? Right. Something that don't belong, right. Something that don't belong to you. Correct. Yes. No, no, hey. I, I totally agree. Right. So now that's all I'm saying. Cause 
and, and, and I can make this even plainer with prophecy because, you know, the prophecies that lead up to Christ help to understand his personality as well, because you're looking for certain attributes, right? Go to, go to Isaiah chapter 42. Okay. I'm going to show you something. All right. Isaiah, Isaiah 42. But I want to just reiterate once again, is, is mm -hmm. that like you said, you know, for someone to lust in their heart for somebody else or to have hatred in their heart for a brother, right? Uh, the most mm -hmm. high see these things. Okay. Oh, yeah. so we have to repent, right? But we must repent from these things. And that's also keeping is also keeping the commandments, right? Absolutely. Because if we expect to be delivered, we have to turn from our wicked ways. is is very very important. Now, mm -hmm. if we don't, then we're not going to hear from heaven. So, right. for us to have to make sure we don't have these secret sins within the heart, right? It it takes a spiritual uh, mind. We have to renew our mind, fight those vain imaginations that exalt itself above the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. So we all have to fight this from within ourselves and fight those thoughts and conduct right. ourselves in righteousness, right? So just to make sure that, you know, we can, is is something that we all have to do individually because if we don't do this, then how are, how are we expect to hear from heaven and how are we expect to be gathered, get, uh, gathered back to our land and for our land to be healed. So it's also a spiritual fight that we must do within because we oh, yeah. can't have these secret sins within our hearts. Yeah. Yeah, you got you got my agreement on that. Um get hit hit that uh that Isaiah 42 and pick All up right. on, um pick up on verse 21. All right, 42, 21. Uh KJV. All right, so 21. 42, 21, let's go down. Mm -hmm. 42, 21. All right. So mm -hmm. the Lord, the Lord is well pleased for mm -hmm. his righteousness sake. Mm -hmm. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Make it honorable. So now this is the problem. There was a lot of adultery that was going on during that period of time. Right. And it was, how did it pop off? It started with the thought. It started with the covetousness, and then that covetousness was turning into adultery. So when Christ was saying this, he was magnifying the law, right? Both of covetousness and adultery, and he was making it honorable, meaning I'm going to help you keep this because y'all struggling. And I see it because I'm walking by you and I can feel in your spirit that you're lusting. I can feel in your spirit that you're looking at this man wife. So let me help you. Because as you continue, let's go back to Matthew chapter 5 and 27. We're going to read a little bit on it so you can see, what, see what's going on. All right, Matthew 5, 27. Because he's, he's trying to help them to keep these laws, right? Correct. So now Matthew chapter 5 and 27 says, Ye have heard that it was said of them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. Right. That's the Ten Commandments. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath already committed adultery with her in his heart. Why was he saying this? Because everybody was running around trying to stone each other for adultery. Remember what happened with the woman? It's like, look at this woman. She's been caught in adultery in the very act. What say you? Right. So everybody's running around trying to stone each other for adultery. Right. So that was known. It was common. It's like he was taking things that were common to their very lives to bring it to fruition. Like, OK, boom. How can I get your attention right now? All right. So if you keep looking at that woman like that, you're already committing adultery in your heart. In other words, you're thinking about a rock flying at your head. Right. Like somebody's pitching fastballs right at your head. Yeah. So Christ is, he's trying to get that image in your head that if you don't stop doing that, Somebody going to be pitching fastballs at you, bro. See that? Watch yeah. this. 29. Read, read 29. It says, and if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right eye offend thee, cut right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish that not the whole body should be cast into hell. 
Why the eye and the hand? Because the eye is what you're using to look at this woman. The hand, eventually, you're going to touch her. So, so, right. so all he's all he's doing is just visually putting it, searing it into your brain to stop the first step towards sin. Correct. That's Correct. it. Right. He's not. He's, right. not, he's, not creating, nature's... he's not creating a new law. He's taking what was already written, and it's almost like you ever seen somebody take some leftovers and then make something new on the plate yeah, for you. Yeah, I got you. Right. That's yeah. all he did. He just added yeah, some, some seasoning on it, put it back in the yeah. uh, uh, microwave. Right, it's good. Yeah. Let, hold, and you like, yo, what's this? Nah, that, I made that last night. All right. Nah, this can't be the same thing. Nah, I chefed it up for you. You just made this. You just made this. This is fresh, bro. Nah, I, I just made it more palatable. That's all. Right. Right. That's and I think, it. right. And I think that's what Christ, you know, that's what, that's what, um, you know, Christ, Christ have done, you know, is, is, and, and so we can see, right. And so you say it wasn't so much of an enhancement, more of a magnifying uh, mm -hmm. of, of these, um, you know, sins or laws that we have to make sure that we uh, follow. And I, and I totally agree with that. Right. But see, um, even the thought, you know, uh, you know, is is a, a problem because, you know, uh, what we think of, we pretty much uh, become. Uh, we mm -hmm. have to cast down those thoughts uh, immediately. And so understanding this. Right. Um, and we look at the world system, how much flooding, flooding of of sins and influence of sins is mm -hmm. being poured in us is is to be poured purposely in us. So that we don't get conformity to Christ's image. That's the whole purpose of all the media, all their money, all their efforts that they all are making. And Satan knows this too. Their main effort is to prevent the pregnant woman from having that child, mm. right? That that's child crazy. who was conformed into Christ. That's what it's all, that's what it's all about. Because mm -hmm. Satan trying, because once once the uh, woman uh, brings birth, Satan, he also falls down as well. So we understand the war breaks out in heaven. So not only the Gentile powers fall, Satan falls as well. So this is why the bombardment of, of these, uh, you know, um, sins of influence is all throughout the media to contract and to control our minds. Is is high-level sorcery, as you know, to control the mind. But we have to... Uh, avoid that and just stay with the word, fight these thoughts day in and day out mm -hmm. to prove that, mm -hmm. you know, that we have repented because if we don't, then how, again, how are we going to fulfill uh second Chronicles seven to 14? So mm -hmm. I think the most high is, is, and, and again, you know, how long must we be uh, perfect and, and walking in righteousness? Is it a day or two weeks or three weeks or four weeks? Are we spiritually mature? Okay. Now, if we if we fall back down again, right? If we sin, then you know what? You're not mature yet. So you're going to be tested. The same way it was a testing period and um in Egypt in the wilderness, all right, until the most high proved that you are ready to go in the land. So we well, may want to say, right, go ahead. Just 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 to just to, to dovetail on that, I mean that proven period actually turned out to be very disastrous for a lot of the Israelites because remember we just read in Hebrews chapter three, 15 down to 19, that they perished in the wilderness for their unbelief. So literally you had 40 years that they traveled through that generation had to die off. And then the laws were restated in Deuteronomy. And what we were reading at Deuteronomy 30 is actually the gospel for those individuals who are going in the land to understand not just the fruition of the promised land, but also the promises that were going to come from their seed, right? Actually, it was going to be for their seed, even after the blessings and the curses. Um, I want to, I want to, I'm going to put a definition in the chat just to kind of just tie up this um, discussion that we just had about Matthew 5. Right. Look at, the, look at that, look in the room chat and read that Strong's definition for me. This is, this is for the word covet which is Kamad. Read right, that. Let me just refresh my page. Let me see. Yeah, it's, in, it's in the room chat. All right. All right, Strong's 
Strong's H2530. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kamad, Kamad, a primitive root to delight in beauty, greatly beloved, covet, mm-hmm. uh, delectable thing, great desire, goodly lust, pleasant Love. thing. Yeah. So Christ was saying the exact same thing, bro. Lust is coveting. Right. Yeah. So, you know, he didn't change the law. Because I, I only I address that because a lot of times people will say that and they don't realize that Christ was only speaking the things that the Father told him to say. And these things were already written. So, like, when he was in the wilderness, right, he wasn't coming up with his own responses to Satan's advances. He was like, it is written. <laughs> you know, you must, uh, man must not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of mouth of God. You must not put uh, the Lord your God to, to the test. It is only your God that you must serve, right? So, like, he was literally going to scriptures to confound the devil, right? So that's that's all I'm saying. Like, just, just bear in mind, and this is something I'll tell you, like, just straight up, flat out, and we can go to any scripture you want, and I can I can definitely, you know, to the best of my strength and ability, I can show you anything that you see Christ say, the prophets already said it or Moses already said it. And anything that Paul says, because he was taught by Christ, you're going to find it in the law and the prophets. And if you can't find it in the law and the prophets, then you need to question whatever doctrines you're coming with. Because I can, matter of fact, I'm going to prove it. Let's, let's, let's go to, um, let's go to, let's go to, let's go to Acts chapter 24 and 14 real quick. I'm just going to show you, I'm going to show you three scriptures. And I'm going to ask you a question because I think this will help you greatly in your studies. Because would it be honest to say that when we went into a lot of these Old Testament things, these, some of these things you've seen for the first time? Sent? You, you still there, Art? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm here. My, my mic is muted. Uh, yeah, there was there was one verse where uh, that you went to, um, you know, that I didn't I didn't see that verse where uh, Christ quoted something in the uh, New Testament and he went to the Old Testament and it was confirmed. Uh, but right. I forgot what that point was. Right. But no, yes, yeah, 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 certain things that you have 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 went to. I didn't see that verse before. Um, so, that, so 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 I'm going to just I'm going to say this because I'm going to tell you right now, like I came up, I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. So I was like steeped into Christianity. Right. And I was not only I was confounding Christians on on certain doctrines. Right. But I was still a Christian myself. So I have a firm background in Christianity. So the way that I was taught to read the Bible was read from Matthew to Revelation. Right. And get that get that sounded down. I wasn't taught to go into anything from Genesis to Malachi. Now, when I started doing that, that's when it started making a correlation. Like, wait a minute. Paul said that Christ said that. That wait a minute. So wait a minute. None of this stuff is new. All of this stuff was said before. They're just bringing it into the context to show you how the Most High is going to give you the outer working of His purpose. That's it. But all the prophecies have already been done from the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, the- so that was the reason. Right. So 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 that was the reason why uh, Christ says that. Um, had you believed Moses, because he wrote of me. I'm right? done. That you see right. what I'm saying. And this is right. why he told you, this is why he told you the Pharisees and the scribes sit in Moses' seat, whatever they bid you do, just don't follow after their works because they say and do not do. They're hypocrites. But as far as like what they're telling you to do is the truth, because that truth is like I'm standing here in front of you, right? <laughs> Clearly, because of those things that were written before time. So I, I would just I would encourage you, like, whenever you see Paul say something, if you can't find that in the old testament so to speak from you know either the law of moses or the prophets you better find it because until you find it your your understanding is going to be all over the place because christianity pulls you into their direction of of uh sight without scripture and that's right. dangerous so when christ right right so when christ says that um you know where where he you know christ calls well not he calls himself but the most high uh uh, the word, the word took on flesh. You know, we see that in John one one, right? The yeah. word took on flesh. It's it's basically the Most High's word took on flesh. Um, so Christ is just pretty much fulfilling what's already written of Him, 
uh, and also what the Most High want to accomplish uh, moving forward as well. You know, some of these prophecies. Right. Um, so, yeah. So I know I, I, I definitely see that, you know, uh, no, Christ is not going to uh, say nothing different. Right. Than what's already written. Right. Um, mm -hmm. He come in the volume of the book. I totally agree. But some of these prophecies. Right. You know, it seemed like the Israelites, um, those Jews back then. You know, if they wasn't hearing to Moses what we see in scripture, they're not going to hear uh, a man coming and, and you know, teaching it um, because he was he was touching at their heart, you know, the heart of the matter. I think Christ was touching at that, um, telling people to change and the Israelites wasn't trying to hear it. it you know, it wasn't they wasn't trying to hear it. I don't think they had issues with, with keeping some of the uh, customs. I think they was doing that. But in terms of um, character within their hearts, they was having issues with doing that because they loved they, they were stiff necked. They loved their their ways. They love self. Right. So is 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 pretty much, uh, you know, clear to that regard. So, um, yeah, no, no. I, I mean, I don't I don't disagree with that, you know, but we have to, um, you know, walk the same way, I think, uh, you know, to be conformed to Christ's image, you know, is is something that we have to do. Um, listen, I'm about to step off real quick, real quickly. Um, yeah. I want to, I want to do a few things, but look, it was, it was a great bill. Um, yeah, kind of, uh, kind of. Kind of. Yeah. So we, we'll do it again. We'll do it again. Yeah. Whenever yeah, you see me. Yep. All right, brother. Yes. Yeah, so I'll follow you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I'm gonna follow you, bro. So it was, it was, it was a great bill, but again, I want to just, you know, uh, just look at that, you know, pregnant woman. Um, you know, who is who was this man child? You know, who was this man child, right? What does so, it mean? Uh, so, for the birth? Yeah. I'm gonna give you I'm gonna get I'm gonna give you a quick synopsis of who that is, right? Go to Luke chapter one and sixty-seven. And this will help you real this will help you greatly with that with that contention point in that scripture. Let me know when you get there. You muted up. Are you there yet? Yeah, my mic was muted. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, I'm there. All right, so Luke right. chapter one. Yeah. Yeah, start at 67. 67? All right, cool. Yeah. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying. Now, stop right there. So now, this is right. letting you know this is a prophecy, right, that Zechariah is, is, uh, is spitting right now. This is This is the Holy Spirit that's on him. So this is not his own words. Go ahead. Right. Okay. Um, so, all right. So verse 67. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for mm -hmm. he, for mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. has visited and redeemed his people. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So who was this coming? <laughs> this is Christ, man. <laughs> this is not the father. This is this is not the father. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right. So who is all right? So who is the God of Israel? So watch this. I want you to keep reading. It's going to give you more context. Re <laughs> re keep reading this. All, right. Mm -hmm. all right. So 60, uh, 69 mm -hmm. and have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David. OK, so and now I'm going to read you yeah. something. Quick. Stay right there. Keep keep your thumb right there. I'm gonna read you something real quick. This is Acts chapter 13 and verse 24. And this is it says, uh Salaki, Salaki. Here we go. It says, When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom do you think that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose, men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is this word of salvation sent. Right? So he's sending a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Right? When you read Matthew 1 and 1, it's letting you know that Christ came from David and Abraham. Right? So that's that horn, that power. Of salvation that's going to come out of the house of David. Read 70. 70, 70, 70. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, 
which have been since which have been since the world began. Mm -hmm. So all the prophets spoke about Christ. Keep reading. All right, let me just get the. Uh... You got seventy one. Okay, yeah, I guess now, here, now yeah. here's the key. Mm -hmm. And we should be saved from our enemies. Whoa. From, whoa, 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 yeah. Whoa. Saved from our enemies. So now, when you talk about salvation, this is the definition of salvation here. Being saved from our enemies. So the enemies don't need salvation. They're already in their kingdom. They're straight. <laughs> they whooping our ass. They got us paying their bills. So they're good. So it says that we should be saved from our enemies. And what? And from the hand of all that hate us. Mm, keep reading. To perform the mercies, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Hold on. Which, 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 yeah. which fathers? It was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Correct. Keep reading. And to remember his holy covenant. Keep his law, statutes, and commandments. Go ahead. All right. The oath which he swore to our fathers, to our father Abraham. The oath mm -hmm. which he swore to our father Abraham. Mm -hmm. That he would grant unto us that mm -hmm. we be, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies may serve him without fear. We just read that in Deuteronomy chapter 30. I believe it was, was, was from like four down to, to seven how he was going to gather us. Christ said he was going to gather us also. We read Christ saying that, how he's going to send the angels to gather his elect, right? And when you, matter of fact, hold on, let me let me get a scripture real quick on that elect, just to clarify that elect, Isaiah chapter 41 and verse eight, it says, Salakia, that's not what I want. I want Isaiah chapter 45 and verse four. It says, for Jacob, my servant's sake and Israel, mine elect i have called thee by name i have surnamed thee though thou hast not known me so that elect that christ was talking about being gathered are the israelites right so that they could be saved from their enemies and from the hand that all that hate them so that they could serve without fear right read 75 in holiness and in righteousness before him all the days of our life now, see, now here's the key. I'm going to do some Paul for you real quick because I, I, I'm going to give you some New Testament because most people would take you to the Old Testament on this one. I'm going right. to give you I'm going to give you some New Testament for this scripture. Let's I'm, now hold your finger right there. Right. Because we're at 75. I want you to go to Second uh, Corinthians, chapter seven and one. All right. So you want to go there or you go there? You, I want you to see it, cause this, you, bro, everything you've been talking today, you literally, this is, this should be one of your favorite scriptures. All right, second, second Corinthians, chapter seven and verse one. All right, seven. Verse one. All right, having, having there for these promises. Mm -hmm. Dearly beloved, let mm -hmm. us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, mm. perfecting holiness and the fear of God. You see that? Yeah. You see that? Perfecting that godliness and that holiness and the fear of God. So now, what is the fear of God? We just talked about it. To keep his commandments. That to keep, leads, Yeah, to keep those commandments. Yeah. That That's how you perfect holiness. Right. And that's how you get the filthiness of the flesh and the spirit out of there. Correct. So 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 let's go back. Let's get that. Uh, let's get that. Luke one and seventy five and, and just finish this one. up. All right. Luke one seventy. Yeah. Luke one seventy five and what we read here. All right. So, yeah. So. Uh, and holiness and righteousness before him mm -hmm. all the days of our life. Mm -hmm. 76. And you, Woof. Right. And you, and child. Thou, and thou, child, uh -huh. shall be called the prophet of the highest. Mm. For you shall go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. 77. 
77, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people mm. by the remission of their sins. You see that? So now Real here's the, so, yeah. so a classic example of what we're talking about. What's, get, the, what's the remission? Right. So the, so, so, so the knowledge of salvation, right? How would you know how to get saved if you don't understand how to keep these laws? That's why the 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 magnification of that law that you were talking about when we went to Matthew chapter five and twenty what was it was twenty seven I believe talking about uh, lust and coveting and adultery, right? This is knowledge that leads to salvation, is it not? Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is what the Most High. I mean, this is what we must do to uh, hear from heaven. And and uh, the Most High uh, come and uh, heal our land and restore us and gather us from the four corners. Um, right. Yeah, all these passages, uh, the Old Testament promises. Yeah, they, they they're all in, they're all interconnected. Um, it's yeah. clear, even what we see in the Book of Revelation. Now, in the Book of Revelation, again, is is metaphoric, um, uh, symbolic. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we we do know it wasn't like a like a literal woman, you know, pregnant. That's representing Israel. Yeah. Okay, so so my question to you would be because um, the pregnant woman, the child that she's pregnant with, you're mm -hmm. you're referencing to where that's Christ. This is huh. what you're referencing to where that's Christ. So, right. um, because I have a different I have a different understanding. I don't I don't think um, uh, the pregnant woman I don't think her child is it's Christ. Um, I see Christ to be uh, the Redeemer. I do see that. Because he represents the Father. The Father ultimately is the Redeemer. He is our salvation. So Christ is coming on behalf of the Father. Christ is the Redeemer. But the child that's in that pregnant woman, I see that child to be the kinsman Redeemer. A kinsman Redeemer. And I think it's, it's a difference between the two. So, right? so the only reason, so, the reason I wouldn't agree with you on that is because of Deuteronomy chapter 20. So, like for instance, if you if you're talking about a kinsman redeemer, right? This is a situation where we would not be able to get redeemed, right? Unless we were keeping these law, statutes, and commandments in the faith of Christ. So that that kinsman redeemer was something that was in the law in Leviticus chapter twenty five. I know exactly what you're talking about, right? But, because but this, right now, because as we right, because if 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 Christ um, because again, you know, what Christ have done, he came on here on earth and his sacrifice was already done. So you know, um, why why are we um still here in the land of our captivity? Like why are we still here? Um so, if that child was Christ. So here's right? the, hold on, how's Ram? Yo, I, what's going on? Shalom. Um so so literally we have we have a situation now where we're still in the land of our captivity, subject to payments, right? So now you're looking for a level of salvation that's not going to come until he comes and gathers his elect. That's that's what Christ was talking about when we went into Salakia. Let me go back and take a look at that real quick. We were at Matthew chapter... Yeah, I think 20... 24. Yeah. Yeah. So when we were in 24, right? Now, we could even... We could do... We were at 24 and 31. Right. Where it talks about him gathering his elect from the four winds of the earth. Right. Now, check this out. But it, it gets even deeper. Go to Matthew 25 and 31 and read that. All right. Matthew 25, 31. Because mm -hmm. there's, there's still some things that have to come to fruition before we're taken out of the land of our captivity. And and uh, the tables turn, so to speak, with these curses turned on the other nations, according to what we read in Deuteronomy 30 and 7. So yeah, read read uh Matthew twenty five and thirty one. All right, twenty five and thirty one. Mm -hmm. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, mm -hmm. then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory, and before Him shall be gathered all the nations, mm. and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from among the goats. Mm -hmm. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but mm -hmm. the goats on his left. Right. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, mm -hmm. inherit the kingdom prepared for you from before the foundation of the world. Now, here's the thing. 
most people don't realize this is also something that the Most High God did initially in the land. Go to Deuteronomy 32 and verse 8. Right. So do you believe that there's two kingdoms? Well, 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 not two kingdoms, but the son's kingdom transition into the father's kingdom. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. That's like a gray area conversation I, I really haven't considered. OK. Uh, you mean as far as him handing the handing the kingdom back to his father? Right. For that the son to be. Yeah. It's where the father can be all, uh, in all in all, because Christ is is um is at the right hand now until. Uh, he make his enemies his his footstool. Yeah, so, I, I, right? I don't. Yeah, I, right. I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that. I think it was the way you phrased the question. I didn't. But but if you if you read read Deuteronomy thirty two and verse eight, because this is really about the separation of the nations, right? He was dividing the sheep from the goats, and that and what we just saw. Right. All right. So Deuteronomy. All right, what was that chapter? Uh, what's the address? Oh, 32 and 8. All right, 32. All right, so we see here. All right, so when the Most High divided to when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the children of Israel, mm -hmm. according to the number of the, of the children of Israel. Yeah. See that? So it's the same thing. He's going to separate and divide the sheep from the goats. And in 34, it says, And the king shall say unto them on my right, on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you something. I'm gonna put I'm gonna have to put it in the uh the room chat because I know you're not gonna be able to see it because you don't have the apocrypha on your phone or on your whatever device you use. So let me show you Second Ezra chapter uh, nine and verse eight. Right. So, so when John, so when John was weeping in Revelation chapter five and uh, verse five, mm -hmm. right? John was weeping. So, why was John weeping? Like, what did he see? What was the reason why he was weeping? Was it because was was that was he weeping because how things was before Christ came on earth, or did John he was weeping because something that he saw after? uh christ came on earth we can look at that because i didn't we didn't get there let's let's look at this um this second as just nine and eight and then we can go right over there and take a look at that all right cool um, um look in the room chat because i put i just dropped it in there all right let me see what it says all right so all right second address nine eight shall be preserved from all right shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation and my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified sacrificed them. Sanctified. For I have sanctified right. For I wait, 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 wait. All right. Shall be preserved from shall be preserved from the sad perils, and shall see my salvation in my land, and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. You see that? So right. this is this is going well, right that back. Connects, those... That connects with uh, Romans chapter eight. Uh, eight and twenty nine. For those who he predestined, he called and justified, and, and those whom he also glorified. So this is something that he did uh, from before the foundation of the world. Right now, who is the called? Uh, well, the called is is Israel. It is it is Israel. Okay, that's it. That's it. Um, right, it is right. It is Israel, and, and I totally uh, you know agree. But however, you know. Whoever gets the Holy Spirit, I don't think we cross the T and dot the I on that fully. Whoever mm -hmm. gets the Holy Spirit, have they been predestined? So I can I can dot that T for you because I, I remember you were kind of going to uh, Cornelius for that. And I knew that's where you were going when you asked the question that you asked. I would just ask that you read a specific verse in there. Go to Acts chapter right. 10, verse 36. Right, because I would just say, right, no, because I would, I would just say, no, I, I do believe that it do pertain to Israel for those of whom he have called from the for the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. And so those whom he have called, he gave the Holy Spirit to. Now I asked the question, can Gentiles of the other nations get the Holy Spirit? So I, you know, that's when it went to, I think someone said no. And I was about to go into that. So if somebody received the Holy Spirit, can we conclude that they was uh, foreknown before the foundation of the world? I know it's us, so, I agree. But whoever gets the Holy Spirit, 
was they foreknown before the world was, if they get so, the Holy Spirit. So this is the Holy Spirit. So, so I want, yeah, so I want you to I want you to read that Acts 10 and 36. Okay. Oh, Acts 10. Oh. Yeah, come, come. Did he say that Gentiles can get the Holy Spirit? He's 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 I investigating it. I asked, he, I asked yeah, he's, he's investigating it. Yeah, he wants to he wants to know if that's a possibility because of, he's looking at the Cornelius account right now, and right oh. now he's, he's reading Acts ten and thirty six right now. After Correct. Acts ten. Okay. Yeah, it was Acts. Well, actually, Acts ten forty four. Okay. 10, right, but I want you to read thirty six to get the context of what's going on. All right, cool, 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 cool. So if you right, would, so if you would, matter of fact, let me, let me, let me, I'm going to help you even further. Read 35, right? And then we're going to go into what 35 means. Read that. All right, Read let's go. 35. All right, the full chapter. 35, all right. But in every nation, he that fear him and worketh righteousness is acceptable with him. Start with 34. So like, yeah, sure. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth. I perceive that God is no respect of persons. Now stop right there. So now I don't believe that he is a respecter of persons. However, does the most high God respect nations? <laughs> All right. Well, look, look. I uh, well, well, look. When he chose us, yes, he res it was it was it was a respect of nations because he chose us. He haven't dealt with the other nations, right? So he did respect us. He chose us. I agree, right? So now, so now, so so like, let me ask you this. So if you know that he's a respecter of nations, right? We got that out the way, which is perfect because I, I could have wrestled with you and took you to precepts and we could have did all of that. So you get that point. So now that you understand what well, you knew that he is not a respecter of nations, right? Or in essence, he, he's going to pick Israel right. over everyone. Well, he, That's can, can, we prove, can we prove another point on that, Paul? You don't mind? Yeah, go right ahead, huh? Hey, 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 can you so, get uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 8, Saint? Saint? We, just read, we literally just uh, read. Yeah. Oh, yeah? We Deuteronomy. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, you good. So, 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 so Deuteronomy 32 and 8 is where he separated the nations uh, according to the sons of Israel. Yep, and he divided right. Deuteronomy four, four and sixteen and seventeen. Con, so so we we got so, the, the we got the division of the nations for as right, according cool, yeah, yeah. to Israel. So so what I wanted to know from you is, we know that he's not a respecter of persons, but we do know that he respects nations, right? <clears throat> so like it. So now within the nation of Israel, he is going to decide whether he's dealing with you based on what work at the righteousness okay oh you reading <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, reading yeah. all right so yeah. if, hey so if you're gonna read it read it Go ahead. right all right so all right so, so all right so 35 all right so but in every nation he so does fear so, him. wait a minute but that but that now that we have the understanding but in every nation is that in every nation Israel? Yes or no? <laughs> no, I should just to be uh, every nation. <laughs> look what you did. Look what you did. See, now let's start it again. When right. I well, there was no respect before, of persons. Right. The Most High just dealt with us as, as a nation. Right. As he did with the insurance. So, right. So, for instance, this is my best example. I'm giving you my best example for how I can explain this. Was Daniel faithful? Daniel was faithful? Absolutely. Was Jeremiah faithful? Absolutely. Okay. Did they go into captivity? Sure did. Regardless of how faithful they were, they had to go into captivity because their nation oh. went into captivity. I got a question. Was that's was, correct? Was Christ in captivity? Yes. Was Christ, see, and this was is what Christ I'm saying. So in captivity, he said, "Yeah." Yes. Was he? What? So exactly, he, he judged us as a nation. Christ was his so, only begotten son. So, so, so if if he only judges nations and he's not a respecter of persons, mm. right? Now, when we go to thirty five, and he's saying in every nation, does that include other nations or is that just Israel? 
<laughs> bro, this is where I'm like leaning because from what I'm gonna I draw see, you, bro, I'm gonna draw you a chart. Uh, <laughs> right, right, because Peter, Peter was like, hold on, hold on, like yo, like I know how it was before. We can't, we can't, you know, conversate with them. We can't interact with them. So who, what Peter who, saw. But who, but wait a minute, but who, who was he talking about? Well, Peter, uh, Peter understood that to mean. Well, first of all, Peter knew that he he was not to interact with the other nations. Wait a minute. Uh, see, I got all right. So you're I, saying I all right. So you're saying all right. So you're saying that Peter was told the southern kingdom was not told to interact with the northern kingdom. I know. I know where you're going. Okay. So right. Not only it that. Was, not was, only that, but I could demonstrate that with Christ because when you read at Matthew chapter ten, five and six, he tells you not to go to the Samaritans. Right. 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 So the, so the thing was, the tents of Judah needed to rise first. Remember, I told you that. That's the problem. What is that? Zechariah 12 and 7? Right. Right. And, so I, the and, I, the, and I can agree. I can, so, I so, can definitely agree. Correct. So now, so now, remember, they were eating with, with those individuals, and, and, uh, and Paul checked them on that. Like, yo, where are you acting funny when the Pharisees come around, right? Like, so you're saying that, right? So, so you're saying Peter was eating with the Northern Kingdom? I'm not going to say Northern Kingdom per se, but these were individuals who identified as Greeks because they were scattered about. I think I need to show you a prophecy. And this, will, I, think this will, I think this will cleanse your palate for the rest of this conversation. <laughs> let's go. Let's go to Zechariah chapter nine. Well, because I'm, 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 I'm saying that because, I mean, um, there was somebody up here earlier who said they was from Reuben. Right. It's I okay. mean, it's OK. I'm not going to listen, bro. I'm not going I'm not going to box myself in with information that I don't have. If you you should know by now whatever I say out my mouth I'm going to give you a scripture. If I don't have oh, a no, no, word then I'm absolutely. not I'm not going to speak on it. I'm not you know I'm going I'm only going to give you of my strength, right? So right, cool. so, so so just to cleanse your palate, let's go to Zechariah 9. All right, Zechariah 9. Let's go. Cuz remember, we got to go by what Moses and the prophets say and we have to correlate it with what's being said because Paul only spoke what what the what the uh the what what the Lord Moses Moses and what the prophet said. So let's read right. this. Let's read this. This is Zechariah nine and one. All right. Let me Zachariah. know when you get it. matter of fact, I want you I, I want you to read it because I want you to see this. This is gonna be beautiful for you. All right, cool. So Zechariah nine verse one. Mm -hmm. The burden the burden of the word of the Lord in the land of Hadrach mm -hmm. and Damascus. Mm -hmm. shall be the rest thereof when mm -hmm. the eyes of man as of all the tribes of israel shall be towards the lord mm -hmm. so now we got we got repentance going on right we keep the commandments just like we read in deuteronomy chapter 30 right we've we've bethunk ourselves as we read in first kings 8 right we're, we're repenting the most high is now delivering us read this verse 2 mm-hmm mm -hmm. And and Hanneth also shall and Hanneth also shall border thereby Tyrus and Zidon, though it be very wise. Mm -hmm. Verse three. And Tyrus did build herself a stronghold, and heaped up silver as the dust, mm -hmm. and fine gold as the mire of the streets. So these people have taken advantage of us. They've been they've been getting money. Go ahead, read that. Yeah, verse four. Behold, the Lord will cast her out. Mm -hmm. And he will smite her power in the sea, mm -hmm. and she shall be devoured with fire. These curses are turned on our enemies. Keep reading. Verse 5. Ascalon shall see it and fear. Gaza also, also shall see it and be very sorrowful. And Ekron, for her expectation, shall be ashamed. Mm -hmm. And the king shall perish from Gaza, and Ashkenaz shall not be inhabited. Mm -hmm. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. He's killing all the fathers. Will... He's killing all the fathers in Ashdod. Keep reading. And I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. Verse seven. And I will take away his blood out of his mouth, and his ab and his abominations from between his teeth. But he that remain, even he shall be for our God, and he shall be as a governor in Judea. And Akron as a Jebusite. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Verse eight. And I will encamp about my house because of the army, because of him that passeth by, 
and because of him that returneth, and no oppressor shall pass through them anymore. For now I have seen with my eyes. So now we're being delivered from all of the ones that hate us, all of our enemies, right? Because these are the, all, the, they just named all the enemies that surrounded Israel during that time, right? So now keep reading that. <clears throat> Verse nine, rejoice. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, mm -hmm. O daughter of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Behold, the king cometh unto you. He is just in having salvation, mm -hmm. lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the fowl of an ass. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim mm -hmm. and the horse from Jerusalem. None, of, the their, battle none, bowl, none of their weaponry is going to work against us. Go ahead. Verse 10. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen, mm -hmm. and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. Keep reading. 11. As for you also by the blood of your covenant, I have sent forth your prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. Turn you to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Mm -hmm. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto you. So now they're going to get double for everything that they've done. That's that double destruction that you find at Jeremiah 17 and 17. You find that in the gospel at Isaiah 61 and I believe verse 9. So they're going to, they're going to get a double cup also in Revelation for what they've done to us. Keep reading that. Right. Verse uh, 13. Mm -hmm. I have bent Judah when I have bent Judea for me, mm -hmm. filled the bowl with Ephraim and mm -hmm. raised your sons of Zion mm -hmm. against your sons. Oh, Greece. Oh, so wait a minute. So Greece is getting destroyed. So now hold on. Greece is getting destroyed in judgment. So these Greeks that we're talking about. They can't be actual Greeks because Greek is going the Greeks are going to get destroyed. huh? These Greeks that you that people keep running around, Jew nor Greek, those are Israelites that have adopted the Greek customs. <clears throat> keep reading. <laughs> yeah, read it, man. <laughs> <laughs> read. All right. So, uh, all right. So, all right. So, uh, verse thirteen. When I have bent Judah for me, fill the bowl with Ephraim, and raise up your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece. And made you as the sword of a mighty man. Mm. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall be seen over them. And his arrow shall go forth as lightning. As the lightning. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet. And shall go with whirlwinds out of the south. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. The Lord of hosts shall defend them. And they shall devour and subdue with sling stones. And they shall drink. And make a noise as though and make a noise as through wine. And they shall be filled like bowls and as the corners of the altar. Verse 16. And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they mm. shall be as the stones of a crown, lifted up as an ensign upon his land. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. For how great is his goodness. And how great is his beauty. Corn shall make the young men cheerful and new wine the maids. See that? Yeah. So, now, so literally what, what we're reading right now is very similar to what we read at Luke chapter 1, 67 down. How he's going to destroy those enemies that raised their hands against us and persecuted us. And, and the Greeks are a part of that. Right. Well, look, look, I don't I don't have an issue. I, you know, I think most of these, you know, most of these nations, you know, when the uh, most high come back um, again, there's prophecy. People don't think that um, America is going to be here when Christ returns. I I mean, I agree. America will be destroyed at some point, too, before Christ returns. Um, I think Christ is, you know, uh, the show go back to the east. I think at the final um you know, uh, the wars with the most High come back because those regions 
that Christ is going to be fighting these uh, heavily populated Muslim type country, uh, uh, Muslim type regions, Muslim nations. So, um, yeah, look, look, it's 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 clear. Um, <laughs> most are going to destroy these nations. If you're going to destroy all of them, um, you know, it's, 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 it's going to be a run of them. Us. They have to go in. The, they they're going to have to go. When you read when you read Isaiah 61 and Isaiah 60. You know Isaiah fourteen. It's clear that they're going to be servicing handmaids in the kingdom. So it's not, it's not a you know I ain't destroying all of them. I'm not going crazy like that. I'm just telling you that whole thing of of what we're reading about Cornelius and about the respect of persons is within Israel, right? You, you're the respect of the nations is within Israel. The respect of persons, he's not going to do because once again, if if you and I are keeping the commandments and, you know, certain things have to happen, we're in captivity right now, you know, and we're going to get a measure of grace for, you know, for, for, for keeping these commandments, right. And the faith of Christ. But the fact of the matter is we're still in this captivity, just like Daniel was, just like Jeremiah was, even though they were righteous men. And Christ right. was, in, I, and Christ I, was I, born I, in the captivity. Right. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree. Um, and again, it's, it's it's something to where, um, again, we can, you know, look, I would I would uh, agree, uh, you know, to the point where, um, you know, the covenants and promises was given to, uh, you know, uh, um, I'm given to us. If we look at Daniel chapter uh, two and forty four. Oh, my God. Um, you know, the kingdom <laughs> will not be left. Yeah. Yeah. The kingdom <laughs> won't be left to other people. Right. It's going to be is it's going to be. Um, our kingdom, okay, no question. Uh, that statue represents all the Gentile nations um, collectively, and that stone cut out, um, cut out, made without hands. Um, that's referencing, you know, uh, you know, again, uh, the Most High. I think that stone represents a kinsman redeemer um, to to do this because or everything what Christ did. Like, why are we still in captivity, right? And so, um, once those seals, if 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 we look at um, the seal that's on the book in the most uh, in the most high hand in Revelation chapter five, verse five. Um, I do believe that book is a scroll. It's a book in the Old Testament, but I believe that book is a scroll um, because there's seals on the inside and outside. It seems like there's wordings on, on the inside and outside of that scroll. And uh, normally that's how title deeds are, um, you know, you know how title deeds are 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 made. So the title deed, from what I see, that book it is the uh, title deed of the earth, um, something that uh, Adam have lost. It was given into the hands of of Satan, and I believe that title deed, that book, um, I believe is still sealed right now. Um, so, I know many people think the lion is is Christ, but again, John is weeping. Okay, John is weeping, and I want to know why he's weeping. Okay, I want to know why. Now, if if John was weeping based upon what already occurred, right? If it's already occurred, or if it's something to where John was seen, right? What you gotta take me to the account and 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 take me to that account because I well, I did want to see what you were talking about. And also, I hear you mentioning Satan. Do you believe that Satan rebels against the Most High? Uh. Um, no, well, no, well, yes, yes, and no. Um, oh, uh, no, nah, you can't do that. You gotta pick a position. Mm -mm. I'm not gonna let you do that. We've been talking too long and we've been clearing uh, up too much cobwebs for you to be talking about yes and no, right? Well, it's, it's, I have to do it, bro, because, um, again, he, uh, he rebelled. I mean, we can go to the passage, you know, where, um, he, said he would exalt his throne above the stars of God. And uh, the most high said, on. no, Who, you will be brought so, down to the size of the pit. All right. So hold on. So I, I, I can, I can see where you're going with this, but I, before I go there, so you're saying that, that Satan rebelled against the most high. That's what you're saying. Yeah. There was something as yeah, sin was found within him. Right. All um, right, so let's so let's let's go let's go to that account real quick. Let's go to Isaiah chapter fourteen. <laughs> okay, so right before we go there, right, right. So are you in Revelation just yet? Because since we're already here, uh, mm -hmm. we don't have to spend too much time right here. We we can go into Satan. But let me just let me just uh, present something here. This is Revelation five and verse five, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's talking about well, all right. 
uh, Revelation 5 and verse 2. Start at verse 2. Okay. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Uh -huh. And no man in heaven, nor on earth, nor under the earth was able to look in the book, neither was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Verse 4. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open the book and to read it, neither to look thereon. So John is weeping. Now, Jesus, the Hamashiach, is showing him this. I don't think John will be weeping. And Jesus is the one who was able to open the book. Does it say, I believe, that, it, does it, does it say that it was the son of man showing him this or a strong angel? Well, it was it was a strong angel, mm -hmm. right? Well, the strong no, it wasn't. A, it, it it no. Well, well we had to go to uh, who was giving his revelation to John? Okay, no and it says no problem. It, was, it says in verse two. It says in a strong angel was proclaiming with a loud voice. Right, he proclaimed. Right, he well, see, he is the one who was just proclaiming. Right, mm -hmm. where there is no one worthy to open the seals, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. when, when John verse... see it, right, so John is weeping based upon what he heard the angels say. Mm -hmm. And in verse five, it says, one of the angels, uh, excuse me, Salaki, it says, and one of the elders saith unto me, see that in verse five, right? He got... says, uh, weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. Had mm -hmm. prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Right. So right. He's about, he's talking about you got a you got a strong angel, you got an elder, and then you have the lion of the tribe of Judah. Who's the lion of the tribe of Judah? Well, that's that's Christ. This is right. Shiloh. This is what we see in um, the prophecy of um, in Genesis chapter um, forty nine and. Uh, What's that? Verse ten. I could be wrong huh. with the uh, verse, but yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. It's, it's Genesis forty nine. Um, right. We'll so, mm -hmm. Right. So, so in your position, um, is it is it? So John is weeping, knowing Christ already uh, prevailed. No, no, no. Because in verse five, the elders saying, "Weep not." Like in other words, don't worry. I, we got this. Look, there goes there's Christ. He got it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So, so, We're right. Good. So, see, right. So, the uh, revelation, this, this is a, you know, a revelation. These are uh, prophecies. Now, we're, no, we are given, no, look, we are given the end of the book. We are given what's going to happen, mm -hmm. right? We are given that um, the lion had prevailed. Now, I do believe, I do believe that's Christ. I totally agree. Okay. But I like, like I said before, Christ is the redeemer, right? And so, if he redeemed us, um, why are we still here in captivity? So, right, because remember, once because once those seals because once those seals are loosed, if we go to those seals, right, when every seal get loose, it's going to be a crumbling of these Gentile nations, and we see that stone destroys the Gentile powers in uh, Daniel chapter two and forty four. So Ooh. if we look at those seals, once those seals are loose. The Gentile nations are being dissected and destroyed piece by piece by piece. Mm -hmm. So and right so, now we don't see these these Gentile powers being crumbled right now. We don't see it. So all right. So I gotta I'm gonna use a word that I hate using because it makes me sound like a Christian. Most high God uses words, and once he uses words, then those words turn into action. And through dispensation of time. We see the fruition of those actions, but his word never returns back void, right? We talked about That's that earlier. So, so it's never going to be a situation where he says, this is going to happen, and it does not happen. Now, when it came down to the salvation aspect, we just read in Luke chapter 1, 67 down, right? How it talks about that horn of salvation being raised, right, of David. So that was at a time when the child was just... You know, this was a prophecy, right? Right. So he the, had, word, he, the word was already had, sent out. It didn't like it wasn't. You know, it didn't. It didn't come to pass right away. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying. Like, so you can't get caught up in dispensationalism. 
Like you, you have to look at it from the standpoint of like, for instance, you took me to Revelation and then you ran back to Daniel. So I don't want to conflate the two. I want to stay right where we are and deal with this one. So like in Revelation, we understand who's talking. We understand all the audiences and we understand what John is crying about. And we understand the revolution is resolution is Christ. Now, if we want to take it back to Daniel, that two and 44, what you really need to be reading is chapter seven, because chapter seven is going to show you about those beasts that are that are rising and falling. Right. And I believe when you get to verse 25, that's that final beast that's speaking great things against the most high that's seeking to change times and laws and that is going to wear out the saints. Matter of fact, just let's go there. Let's go there. Let's just get it. Go to go to Daniel chapter seven and start at 18. Right. So. All right. Let me just let me just because um, you because what's going to happen, you're going to read 18 and he's going to do it again through Daniel. He's going to declare the end from the beginning and then he's going to show you how it's going to happen. And then he's going to show you the end result. This is every prophecy that you ever read. And this is something I learned the other night while I was at class. Like I was just sitting there. I'm, I don't know. Maybe I just most high gave me an increase or praises. I just was sitting there and I was like, yo. That's how he that's how he prophesies. He never he always tells us the end result at the beginning and we be hung up on the end result. Like how are we going to get here? But he's like the, the, that's where the faith has to come in, because once he gives you that end result, you're just supposed to focus on that and have faith that you're going to get there if you do what he tells you to do. But what we want to do is. But how? But how? But why? But how? And that's when you get caught off. You, you get off track. Right. Well, I mean, right. Well, I would I would have to say uh, because is, you know, even though the most High declared the end from the beginning, he already told us what how the end is going to be. But it had to come to pass. You know, we just can't sit back and just say, well, everything is just going to be done. We so, play a part in this. We, we so do when, play a part because if, if the most High tell us that we have to repent, it's something that we have to do. So because we are not repenting. Right. I think this is the reason why uh, John is weeping, because John has shown something. He's just he's just given um, a, a a vision. What John saw, that's not recorded, but he's weeping for a reason. So we, I'm, I'm quite sure he is concerned with us, our state. Right. It's all about us. Israel getting restored. So I'm, no. quite, I'm quite sure what John's seeing is something that pertained to us. Why saying, is he weeping? So if we're sitting saying, in captivity right why, now. It's, it's clear. He's saying it right here in Revelation 5 and 4. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and read the book. Neither to right. look what there on that book. Right. So, 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 what is so that he was book? weeping over that. So listen. Right. right. Then the but, elder but came over. Right. Stop, stop, no, stop. he was weeping because those seals. Right. Because those seals was not loose. But, let, but let's let's close the book on this. Let's make it real simple. Uh, go ahead. Nobody can open the book. He was crying over that. That's all he was crying over. The elder came over and said, hey, right, chill. See that man right there? He going to take care of it. Simple. Talking about Christ. That's We can move from that point. You don't have to worry about why John was crying no more. And you get that Revelation, uh, Revelation uh, chapter 10, verse 9 through 10. Come. Huh. I'll get that. This is Revelation chapter 10, verse 9. <clears throat> And it says, and I went to the angel and said to him, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth as sweet as honey. But as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. So let's get to this, Daniel, because I want you to see the dispensations of time of how these nations are rising and falling and, and how he declared the end from the beginning, showed you how it was going to happen and then shows you the end result. That's at, uh, Daniel chapter uh, seven and verse 18. 